We now recognize this gentleman from Tennessee, Mr. Burchett, for five minutes for his question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members, for being here. And um, I want you to know that your congressperson, Eleanor Holmes Norton, has, uh, represents y'all well up here, and she articulates your point very well. Although we do disagree, she is a friend, and I appreciate her. Um, and I guess I, first thing I was wondering, I don't know if anybody's asked this or not, you know, all I see up here is white men. How come there aren't any black folks that are testifying in this thing? Is anybody? Well, the, sir, that was a comment that I alluded to at the end of my testimony. Mr. Allen alluded to that as well, but we didn't choose the witness list. Well, I'm sorry you didn't. Uh, Mr. Allen, uh, in 2020, you proposed cutting $15 million to the police department budget. Is that correct? The council approved a redirection of $9.6 million from MPD that year. Yes, sir, but you proposed cutting $15 million, correct? The 9.6 was in operating dollars. The remainder was in capital funds from a half a billion dollar budget, yes. Okay. Still a lot of money. Mr. Allen, on June 28, 2020, you tweeted that this would be the biggest reduction to Metropolitan Police Department you have ever seen. Is that correct? Uh, I don't have that in front of me. It was three years ago, but I'm assuming you're reading something, so I'm going to assume that that's correct. That was the, an explanation of the uh, re redirection of about 1% of the half a billion dollar budget to other public safety priorities. Okay. You also tweeted on that same day, in essence, this is in quotes, in essence, unless money is transferred in by the mayor, there'll be an effective hiring freeze for new officers. Is that correct? Yes, I was explaining the net effect would be that the district, as we went through the summer of 2020, would experience a reduction in new hires for MPD. We actually ended up hiring, I believe, I could get you the numbers for certain, about 100 new officers that year, but that was the net impact. Yeah, we'd have a hiring freeze. Thank you. Mr. Allen, after the tragic shootings on the uh, city's metro transit system in February of 2023, you called for an increased police presence. Is that correct? I frequently work with the men and women in the police department, and whenever we have acts of violence, we work together to increase presence, yes. Okay, Mr. Allen, but your 2020 comments seem kind of short-sighted, don't they? I mean, with, uh, with what was going on. No, sir. We, I work with the police department, the first district leadership, Chief Conti, and all the assistant chiefs. Whenever we're working proactively, both to work to keep neighborhoods safe, we partner with the police as well as other entities. And whenever we do have acts of violence to take place, we work with the police department to have a response. Mr. Pemberton, the proposed D.C. crime bill, which the council pushed through despite a veto from Mayor Bowser, um, that would eliminate mandatory and statutory minimum sentences other than first-degree murder. Is that correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. For all crime categories, no, no, no minimums. Mr. Pemberton, this bill would also reduce the maximum sentence for first-degree sexual assault and first-degree sexual assault of a minor from life in prison to 30 years. Is that correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. Are you aware that homicides have increased 19 percent compared to March 2022? Yes, sir, I'm aware of that. Now, are you also aware that the uh, sexual abuse crimes are up 100 percent compared to March 2022? I think it's even higher than that, but yes. Yeah, it probably is. Everybody likes nice round numbers up here. In your opinion, how do these soft on crime policies towards murders and rapists reduce homicides and sexual assaults? Uh, none, sir. They, they do quite the opposite. They exacerbate the situation. Yes, sir. Thank you for your honesty. Um, yeah. Mr. Allen, in your Ward 6 update dated March 12, 2023, you published a section called Hands Off D.C. in response to the Senate disapproving of your crime bill. Is that correct? Yes, sir. In this section, you stated House Republicans are playing political theater and that this is a very real threat to D.C. residents. That's correct, too, as well, isn't it not? I do believe that's what's happening, yes, sir. Okay. Property crime is up 27 percent compared to March 2022. Don't you feel like that's a very real threat to D.C. residents? I think any crime is a threat to D.C. residents in our community, and it's why, as we talked about, the, the trends over time, both with violent and property crime, have gone down. We have persistent issues around public safety that we continue to work on, both with traditional law enforcement as well as the other ways we invest in our communities to stop cycles of violence, okay. prevent, and then hold accountable individuals who commit those crimes. 
motor vehicle theft is up 105% compared to March 2022. I feel like that's a very real threat to the D.C. residents, and I'm about out of time. But I would encourage you all and my friends across the aisle, when we bring people in here, that it should reflect the community that we're, we have. And um, poor white men, I don't think quite does that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back no time.